What is your favorite healthy food? I make a lovely bean stew. What's your happiness moment recently? When I was together with my three children and 12 grandchildren. I eat a lot when I feel emotional. How can I avoid this? Why are you emotional? You need to control that before you control your food. What's a favorite gift you have received from your kids? I guess my Tesla. <laughs> How do you relax when you are under a lot of pressure? Well, I relax with my dog because I have to walk him. <laughs> so, so that's very relaxing. Do you still want to go to Mars? <laughs> I will go wherever my children want me. A dietitian with two master degrees. So I was sleeping in the living room kitchen and my kids were sleeping in the bedroom. Coming back to Runway and continuing modeling at 73. I'm more successful than ever. The coolest fashion icon. Huawei. I need to say that again, Huawei. <laughs> you know, in Chinese, uh, there's an old saying, from the ashes, the phoenix is reborn. In some ways, your life is a perfect example of this sentence. What gave you the resilience to always keep standing up from the setbacks and just moving on? Well, when you make a change, it's always scary because you don't know if it's going to work out. But if you're in a bad situation, then you, want, you have to make a change. Well, the thing is, when you are in that dark hole, you don't know what will make you happy because you can't climb out of it, you know. There were many times where I was in that dark tunnel. I could see no light ahead of me, none, until eventually I've had enough and then I just run away from it, you know. And then and then you struggle, but you don't, you're not in the dark tunnel anymore. You're just scared because now you've seen some light and you haven't seen it before, you know. So you have to, you have to explore if you're in that dark tunnel. You've got to get out of it. Make that plan now. I also really admire your courage that you never think it's too late to start something. And Huawei's founder, Ren Zhengfei, also only started his company at his age of 43. Do you have any words for Huawei's founder, Ren Zhengfei? He is like <laughs> 76 year old father now, and he has also been through a lot of challenges in his life. I'll say, well done, Mr. Zheng. He's obviously highly successful. If you just see what Mr. Ren has done, you can say to yourself, well, I can do something a little different. So it just needs to be doing good for, for people. You know, since I joined Huawei, I have seen that this company has been through a lot of challenges every single day. So what cultural value and spirit do you think Huawei employees should have to deal with all these challenges? I think you should accept every challenge and do your best you can to show people how good you are and how, how you are committed to a goal that will be better for everyone. And when you have good ideas, you need to share them. Mm -hmm. And people will, will respect you and admire you. You have to work hard and you have to let people see how good you are. When I left in Canada and experienced Huawei for the first time, it just feel like a international tech company, like all the other big names. But somehow, just because it's born in China, it is facing a lot of stereotypes. So do you have any suggestions say, when people are like just overwhelmed by so many questions and misunderstanding by the outside? No, I think I think you need to focus on what you want, what what you're doing, and and do the best you can, and 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 contribute to people, and and just be considerate of others. You know, you you have to block the negative people in your life, but not only on social media. In life, you have to block the the negative people because they will pull you down. I wonder, like, when did you no longer see them? all your uh, children as boys and girls, but uh, adults? Well, they're working very hard, all three of them. They work so hard and they're doing good for this world. You know, I pretty much treated them like, and my parents treated me and my brothers and sisters like we were responsible for ourselves. We did our own homework. They never checked our, our reports. The same with my children. First of all, I don't like it. I find it boring. And uh, secondly, they have to be responsible for themselves. And they were. So when I was a research officer at the University of Toronto, they had to fill out their own forms to get a loan as well as to get uh, scholarships because I can't afford to send them to universities when I was studying particularly for the, so they could go for, for free in, when I was studying uh, in South Africa. I was sleeping in the living room kitchen, 
and my kids were sleeping in the bedroom because I had a one bedroom apartment and they never complained. And if they did, I wouldn't listen. I was stuck and I was moving ahead in my profession. And they, but they didn't, because they were just, they were fine with that. Isn't that funny? I mean, we still laugh about that. And now they're all so successful and busy. How do they make time for you? Oh, they keep <laughs> on inviting me all the time. <laughs> and they look, I'm busy. <laughs> but no, I do spend a, a, quite a lot of time with my children. Do you have any words for people who, have, who fear technology? Well, you shouldn't fear it. You should just work on it. It's hard. I mean, every time there's an update, you you, you get thrown out, thrown out a bit, and you just have to focus on it. And you need to learn about it, and and then it's a big help for you for your future. Unfortunately, we have to admit that, like right now, the world is separating apart in different ways. So, what do you think are the importance of global collaboration? And I think globalization is fabulous. I love everything global. I love I love exploring different cultures and learning history and seeing seeing a, a beautiful buildings and art. And I just love to meet people from different countries. And um, I think we're learning different avenues of, of how to communicate. Especially, thank goodness we have the internet. Huawei helps people communicate and share ideas. I just hope that everybody will appreciate each other more. Yeah. So nowadays, connectivity is allowing a lot of new possibilities for like a dietitian. Now we have more technologies to watch to help you become healthier. Our AI, we can use AI to identify quickly how many calories in a meal. So for you, what are some uh, technology applications you want to see? Well, well, you know, America is very obese and they have a large obese population and a high incidence of, of nutrition related diseases. So if there is an AI form that can, you can look at your food, educate people and that would be good. And even if it's a salad, it can be 2000 calories, depending on what you put in the salad. Are you also using a 5G phone? Yeah, yeah, I have a 5G phone, yes. I do try to keep up to date on every, you know, in technology, uh, uh, so that that my computers and and phones and yeah, I'm using this um, Huawei's foldable phone. I bought it because it's very uh, fashionable. Yeah, happy to send you one next time. <laughs> I'm a fashion icon and there you go. So I need every kind of fashion item. <laughs> I know, lovely. For you, what are the importance to have more women to participate in science and technology? Well, first of all, I want more women to be presidents and CEOs, CEOs of these companies or presidents of countries. <laughs> and men will have to support women to, to bring women up in education because the research work does show that the more educated and the more successful a woman are, the better economy there is for the country. Now, Shenzhen is a very innovative city and also a very green city. All the taxis here are all electric cars. And Huawei is not only making smart tablets, smart phones, wearables, 5G, AI, we're also making uh, smart components to help car companies make smarter cars. Hope next time when you come to visit, you can also try it. Yes, that would be wonderful. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the world opening up again. Yes, yeah, same, same. Thank you. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I wish you all a happier life. Please make every effort to live the good life. Uh, do you have any fashion tips for women in the tech industry? Keep your wardrobe small, reuse your clothes, and it should fit you properly. Your hairstyle is just too attractive. How do you take care of your hairstyle every day? Well, I'm so lucky because I just have to wash my hair and leave it because I always have it cut nicely. When I'm on a fashion shoot, I let the hairstylist cut my hair. In your modeling career, are there any new style you want to try? I try new styles every day because people are doing such creative work with me and it's I never know until they put something new on me, so it's fantastic. And finally, you said in your book, you have had seven fantastic decades, but is it an age you wish you could go back and experience again? No, I prefer the 70s, a much better. It's, life is easier. <laughs>